Hey guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam, and this week we are answering the question, what is the most difficult item to cut into Shadow Foam? Or what is the most difficult tool to organize with Shadow Foam? It's a big question, and it's not a question I could answer myself. I needed some help. So I got Matt, our cameraman, to organize five items ranging in difficulty. Now, where's you got the five items from? I hear you ask. Well, we get offered things all the time. Different companies reach out to us. They want to send us items and tools to review and look at. And a lot of them I don't use, so I can't give them an honest review. They're a bit random as well. We get offered some right random stuff. But I I asked Matt to accept five items ranging in difficulty, getting harder and harder and harder. I'm going to try and cut them all into foam and then we're going to give one of them away. And it's whatever you want, basically. Out of all of the five, goodness knows what they are. There could be some real gems in here. All you'll have to do is let me know which one you want. Let me know why, maybe why it stood out to you and then we'll draw a name and send it out to you. So without further ado, what's the first item, Matt? Right, so what is this first one? Pipe easy tool. Now, I know what this is. This is a beast, to be fair, because I know Tiernan McCorknell, who invented this. So I'm a big Dragon's Den fan. Tiernan took this on Dragon's Den and got investment from Sarah Davies, I think it was. I've actually seen one of these before, but I've never had one, never owned one. So, big up to Tiernan. Go and check out Pipe easy tool, and let's have a look at it. And I'm guessing we've got two because there's another box here the same size. So let's have a look. Now, what is a pipe easy tool? Well, if you've ever done like flooring, laminate flooring or tiling and you've tried to go around a pipe, maybe your radiator and the pipes come out the floor or in a kitchen, you've got like your waste or something. Well, this pipe easy tool is designed to help you make sure those kind of circles you need to cut out in the laminate or the tiling are perfect in the absolute perfect spot. So you get a really nice flush finish. So it's a really novel little tool and lots of little bits and bobs to it. So I do think this is a pretty good challenge to cut into shadow foam. Let's get it set up and then we'll cut it into some green foam, I reckon. Do you want to think about it, Tinan? Eh, uh, no, no, I won't waste your time. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I'll take your offer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so pipe easy tool is all together and it does look quite complicated, I'll grant you. So I can see why uh, Matt picked it as like difficulty level number one, but I think this should be quite simple to be fair because we can just kind of line it all up, set it all up into a nice shape and then cut that as a single item, single tool, not very deep into foam. We will leave a link in the description where you can get one, or maybe you could win this one, but not before I've cut it in foam, that is. So, I've already got some 30 mil green foam, which I think is definitely the call of the day when it comes to this lime green pipe easy tool. But I don't think we're gonna just cut this into foam with no case, because I've got about 10 of these Amazon basic cases. These were GoPro cases, and we did a project basically taking this eight pound, I think it was, eight pound Amazon case and repurposing it for all sorts of things and we did a series of 10 different use cases for this. I've got a couple spare and I think this should fit nicely in here. So that is the challenge. Let's cut some foam to fit in this case. Right, so I've cut an insert out of a piece of scrap and it's dead easy to do that. You just use a long straight edge and then a normal snap off knife. These come in our pro cutting kits. Cut a piece down to size. So that's width and length with the correct size. And then I've used this radius gauge. So this comes in our stencil pack. Basically you just match up the right radius. Once you've found the right one, you can just match it up with a corner, cut around it, and then you end up with an insert that just slots straight in there. And that is already feeling like a more sturdy case, which is great. And I do think the Pipe Easy tool is gonna to fit in there. Obviously I can't cut it in in this crazy shape, so I'm gonna loosen off all of these little knobs and then try and basically get it in some sort of order. That looks a little bit more promising. I think that should fit on there a little bit better. And we've still got the little kind of adapters to fit in the foam as well. So let's do a layout. Right, so there we go, got a bit of a layout going. I think I'll cut the main tool in first and then I'll figure out the attachments later so I can get the space in perfect. But with that said, I've got a layout going, so I'll take a photo and then I won't forget the order I've marked up. Not strictly necessary when it's uh, such a simple layout, but I'll do it anyway. And let's cut this main section into the foam. So I'm happy with where it's gonna go. Literally just take the scalpel and then just cut around it. We're just cutting lightly, just using it like a pencil and just following the line. And I will follow all of the curves around and we'll get a really nice profile then. And we don't have to cut very deep at this point. We just have to make sure we're holding the scalpel perfectly square to the foam or perpendicular to the foam. You don't want it going off on an angle. Right, so I've gone all the way around. So now I can move it out of the way and I'm basically I'm just going back now and following that cut I've made and making it deeper. So 
This item here is, we're talking about 12, 14 mil deep. So we want to we want to cut it down so it's flush with the surface. So I'll make sure I've cut down about 15, 20 mil into this 30 mil insert. As long as I don't cut all the way through, it doesn't really matter if I kind of overshoot where I want to be. So let's just cut this deep enough all the way around, making sure it joins up on the corners. That's kind of a really important part. That way it doesn't tear when we start peeling. So there we go, I've cut all the way around. And if you've done it right, you shouldn't really be able to detect where you've cut, like we've got here. It still looks really good. So now it's time to peel. And for that, you literally just push your finger down one end and then we're just peeling back the foam towards me. And then once you've got a little bit more material, you can kind of get a few more fingers down there and just pull the material back bit by bit. Right, so there we go, that is the last bit there, peeled out, and I have cut like a slightly deeper section there, because we have got like a split level here on this tool. So pop that back in there, and it should fit now, nice and flush to the surface. That is perfect, so now I just have to cut in all of the attachments, so let me figure out exactly where they went again. And it is exactly the same principle, just cut around it, take the item away, and then peel back the foam, so let me do all those. There we go. That is the first item, the Pipe Easy tool cut into foam. And that's definitely an upgrade from the little kind of uh, case that it came in. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I think the case can go there. That is made for it. So we've still got the pencil case with it. It's all organized in that little kit. And that is the first item. So what's the next one, Matt? So number two, slightly bigger box. Matty has cut it up because I'm guessing it's a little bit more obvious from the packaging. What is it? It is a... That's not a tool. That's not a hand tool, Matt. A steady cam. Smartphone stabilizer. That is a pretty unusual shape thing. I can see why you've picked it as a difficult item to cut in foam. It comes in a nice kit. So what is this? This is the Hokem iSteady M6 kit. Give me a second, let me have a look at what this does. Two hours later. Right, so I've had a look at this, and this is a clever little gadget. I really like it. I mean, gimbals aren't a new thing, I don't think. We've never had one, we don't use gimbals, but we do film a lot of shorts, and you've always got an iPhone or a phone with you, haven't you? Everyone nowadays has got a phone in the pocket, and it's got some really nifty features there. So, before we cut it in foam, let me talk you through what makes this a little bit quirky and different. So the first nifty thing that I spotted on this was it's got something called AI tracking. Now, AI seems to be everywhere nowadays, doesn't it? Everything's got AI built in, or everyone's talking about ChatGBT or something. But this one's got an AI vision sensor, and it's just a magnet clip that goes on the top of this kind of iPhone mount. So it comes in the pack, and it just clips on the top, and it's got a really strong magnet, so it feels like it's properly on there. And then the way it works is you use hand signals to help it track you. So when you're walking around, it'll track you. Not only will it say nice and stable, so you've got nice fluid footage, but it'll also keep tracking the person it's filming so it's kind of a novel little feature that I really like it and I had a quick look around the web and I couldn't find any other gimbals that have an AI feature built in like that. You've also got a load of other features built into this that don't need the app so we've got a joystick on the side so we can zoom in, record. It's got this focus wheel on the side as well so you can press that to rotate the phone and on the very front there's a trigger here and if you pull it three times it kind of rotates it into a selfie mode and then you can talk to the camera, click it three more times and it moves forward into a front view which is really cool. It charges with USB-C as well so it's pretty future-proof and you can put it in sleep mode so you press the power button twice and it'll go to sleep conserves the battery really intuitive bit of gear and it's 209 quid so you know there is an investment there it's nowhere near how much you pay for a phone and obviously the phone you have is an absolute powerhouse it can do a huge amount of stuff and obviously there's a huge amount of value in it you connect it with 209 pounds worth of image stabilizer and you've got a really professional rig so a really nifty bit of gear this I'm sure there's even more features to this that I've not been able to discover but I do think we'll probably start using this so when we cut it into foam now I might try and put in some other iPhone accessories and create a kit that we can take out on the road with us and give it a real field test. And if you want one of these, let me know in the comments because you could win it. And we'll put a link in the description as well to an Amazon listing of it so you can go and grab your own one if you're interested. And yeah, nice little bit of kit, really like that. So let's cut it into some foam. Foam again! 
didn't you? Right, so I've got some foam and I've got a case because I've got so many cases around this place. I've got this, this is by Smattery. If it's available on Amazon, we will add a link below. And it's the same principle as that Amazon case that we had a minute ago, but it's just a little bit bigger because this one's too small to hold that. And obviously our plan is, because this comes in a really lovely case. It's got like a, a felt interior, well not, not, it's like a soft cloth interior and it's molded to hold that perfectly along with the little stand and then the leads. But the beauty of Shadow Foam is you can customize something to your requirements. And I think we can add some really cool accessories with this to make it even more useful to us. So this case here is the same height pretty much, but a bit wider, so we'll have a bit more room in there. So all we've got to do is use the same technique we used in the last. I'm gonna take this off cut of foam, cut it down to size, cut some radiuses on the corners and make an insert for this case. Now, obviously we've got space for our steady cam, and then the accessories that go with it, which is the most important thing. But then the leads, we might put those in a tin. Now I get boxes of these tins from Amazon, 20 of these tins, and they're so useful for when you're doing little builds like this and you've got cables. Cutting cables in foam can be quite frustrating. So having a little tin that they can go in and then you can label it, put a little sticker on the front and put that in is really great. But we're also gonna add a couple of other items in here. So the first one is this Rode shotgun mic. This is a lav mic, so it's got like a three meter lead on it and it just plugs into the iPhone port. And then finally, the main thing I think you need with an iPhone is a charger and having a charge lead and a plug. This is the MU plug. Now they don't sell these anymore, but you can still pick them up on eBay. It was at the time the world's thinnest charger. I've got to try and figure out some sort of layout now and fitting all of this in there. So yeah, let me figure out a layout and then we can start cutting foam. there we go I've got a layout I'm happy with so when it comes to cutting foam I've already talked you through the process what do you cut the foam with well you cut it with a scalpel and always wear an anti-cut glove and these things come in our basic cutting kits and these come free with a lot of orders on the website depending on how much you spend you can get a basic cutting kit or a pro cutting kit go to shadowfoam.com and you'll see the full details there and that's got everything we need to cut the foam it's everything I'm gonna need to cut the foam so let's get cracking <laughs> There we go, all cut in, and we've got everything, including the dead cat as well, which is fitted into the case. Nice little upgrade, and I wouldn't say that was very difficult to cut into foam. It was a weird shape. I've had to literally cut all the way around all the little details. I've also done different depth segments in here, you can kind of see, because we've got a few little like, areas that are deeper, and it's no different than cutting in tools, literally. Where there's a deeper section, I've just gone back and peeled out a few extra layers. So that wasn't difficult, Matty. What is your next challenge? So here we are, third on the list. The boxes are getting bigger. Does that mean more difficult? Well, nothing has challenged me yet. Let's have a look what this is. Paint sprayer. What on earth? Paint sprayer, that is... Uh... I've never cut a paint spray in foam. This one looks like a right chunky thing. Oh no, hoses. Hoses are a right pain. I think you've, you've definitely stepping up the level of difficulty here. So what's it? what is this? Who makes this? Let's have a look. Made by Tillswall HVLP, so something to do with high pressure. So I've worked with these before, they're like an airless paint system. So let me familiarize myself with this and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with it. Six hours later. Right, so I've done a bit of research and looked into this model, and by all accounts, it's highly rated. It's got over 3,000 reviews on Amazon. People really focus on the fact it's easy to clean. Now, I've used a Wagner spray gun quite a few times, and that has the little compressor right at the back, and it's quite big and heavy. Now, the idea of this is you wear it with a shoulder strap, so you're taking a big chunk of the weight out of your hand, and this, obviously, when you've got it full of paint, there's a fair bit of weight to it as well, so having the whole compressor thing can be quite cumbersome. And the thing I like about it is that, can stay away from the paint and stay away from the mess. And so can this, you can compress this button here, pull that off, and then that is basically the only part that should get paint splattered. So it's easier to clean, and it's pretty typical really. You have the pipe, this is a wider bore pipe as well than the Wagner has. You'll have to make sure you strain your paint before you put it in this. It does say in the listing as well, it'll work with paint that's unthinned. Now, I would never spray thick paint with one of these, I'd always thin it down, but one of the things that it says is that it can spray unthinned material, I'm guessing because there's such a wide bore pipe on it. 
So there we go. Quite like the fact that it stows away together like this, and then the pipe will attach and kind of hook into the handle like this. So quite a nice little uh, design that. We have to put it in a case, however, because that is the whole mission. So I've been through my dumping ground of cases to find what I had. Lots of different Milwaukee power tool bundles will come with a fuel case. So obviously Milwaukee are kind of renowned for their pack out system, but these fuel cases are still on sale and people are still using these and they do connect together as well. And we do sell shadow foam inserts for them that literally just slot straight in. So you can pick these up. These are 50 mil red and these come straight from shadowfoam.com. Links in the description and they slot straight in and there's a lot of real estate in there, which should be enough for us to cut this in. Although it is definitely a challenge, this is genuinely a difficult item to cut into foam. So my first thoughts, we've only obviously got a couple of items and sadly, although I really like this case, it doesn't quite fit like that. But actually, that I wouldn't say is the most efficient way to pack this into this box anyway, because it's gonna be difficult to get out. What I was thinking is if I put it this way, you can grab it by the handle and pull it out, which is easier. This is too tall to stand in the box, so that'll have to lie down. And then we'll have to kind of cross that bridge when we get to it, when it comes to the pipe. I'm thinking it can possibly go below, but that is pretty much the layout. So it's straight into foam cutting on this one. And I have got three of these inserts, so we can go for like a 3D stack, get a fair bit of height in it. And obviously I've already popped one in there and we can hopefully make this look pretty smart. So I'll get my glove on, get my scalpel ready and let's get cutting. And there we go, that is the paint sprayer all cut into foam. And this definitely was the most difficult so far. This was really, really tricky. Both items are cut through all three layers. Here we've got the compressor with the cable wrapped around it and the hose is in the bottom layer, all wrapped around nice. So when you're cutting in hoses, you essentially wanna make it into a standard shape as best you can, and then you can cut that in. So all of that is now in the case and that is the third item. So what the heck's the fourth? So on to the fourth item and it's a bigger box yet again. So uh, goodness knows what this is. Obviously the bigger the item, the harder it is to cut in foam. And especially it's such a stout box this, goodness knows what it is. Let's have a look. Evolution, oh I know Evolution. Is it a mitre saw? No, what is it? It's a flipping plastering mixer, blow me neck. That is a real challenge that, that is, a, that is about as a, a 3D of a power tool as you could get. Let's open it up, have a look at it and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. So there we go. The fourth level of difficulty is a plastering mixer. You can see why we don't usually accept things onto the channel because although Evolution, I know of Evolution, I actually had an Evolution mitre saw and a table saw from them. They were both orange as well, which I think is the slightly like higher level stuff because they've got like lime green stuff and then the orange is like more pro. Didn't know they did cordless stuff either to be fair. I'm an electrician and uh, we work in workshops and I don't do plastering. So wouldn't have ever had a need for one of these, but now we've got one. And I've got to work out how to, uh, maybe I could mix batter with that or like bread dough. I do like making bread. I made that bread for you. But that is a beast and I'm gonna have to put it in foam because that is the object of this challenge. Not much of a layout required. They've sent us a charger and a battery. And one thing I did notice, as soon as I got this out of the box, this reminded me very much of the skill battery. It's got the same feel to it and it's got the battery indicator on the front, which not many of them have. And I did try it and it works. It's the exact same, exact same uh, mechanism. So that's quite handy actually, because it means that we can use it with all of our existing batteries. Let me go and dig through my assortment of toolboxes, see if I can find something that this will fit in. Then we'll get some foam for it. Later that same evening. Right, so I found a box, not your typical toolbox. I have searched high and low. I went through my full store of toolboxes and couldn't find anything that would be suitable for these two together. I even went to B&Q and had a look around some of the local hardware stores 
trying to find something that was long enough to fit both of these, but also had the width and the depth, and there was just nothing ideal, to be fair. And then it hit me, I already had a couple of these, and I just thought, well, if you're setting up a van, something like this might just want to live in a box and not be used very often. And to be honest, the idea of Shadow Foam is you can turn anything into a toolbox. So why not one of these classic totes? Because it just about fits in here. It's got the right amount of width, it's got just about the right amount of height, and that means I don't have to go out and buy another box when we're just trying to challenge ourselves, can we cut this in foam? So that's the box. All I've got to do now is cut some foam and make a foam insert to go in there. So I've already got a couple of off cuts. I've got 270 mil and that should be enough depth. Let me cut these down to size and then we can do some sort of layout and start cutting. So we've made a pair of inserts to go in this tote. The base layer, I've had to cut some recesses for the four wheels and that sits nice and flush in the bottom. And obviously it kind of uh, evens out what is an uneven surface basically. And then the top layer sits on top of that and that way we've got 140 mil worth of foam. It's a nice snug fit. It's not perfectly tight. We've not got the full template or profile of the box because it's slightly rounded within it. It's quite complicated really. So if you wanted to do a proper insert for that, we'd have to do the old paper templating technique. So go and check out this video if you want to see how to make perfect insert. But all I've done for this one is measure the width and the height, basically make a square that's going to fit in there. And then I've trimmed the corners on the base one, cut the wheels in, and then that is still a nice snug fit. Now we've got our inserts, we can work out the layout. And the first piece or the biggest piece of the puzzle is this essentially. So we're going to cut this in first, then we'll be able to put the charger in probably about there, put the battery in probably about there. And then this is the tricky bit because this has to live on an angle. So we're going to be able to slot that in something like this and that will be able to put the lid on. It's all safe and protected. And then that will be challenge complete. The most difficult challenge out of everything this is, especially finding the box for it to fit in. So with all that said, let's get cutting. <laughs> There we have it. That is probably the worst shadow foam cutting I've ever done. That is definitely the most difficult item. The box was huge. The item wasn't nearly as big as a box. I thought there was a glimmer of hope when I opened the box and saw that the item seemed pretty reasonable. We were going to smash it, but actually, it's just incredibly awkward, even this thing. I mean, let's be honest, that is going to be covered in plaster after the first use. So I gave up, you might see this travesty in the corner here. I gave up trying to cut this in neatly and ended up just chopping out the corner. But it proves anything, even as awkward as this, it can go in foam. Let me know, what would you have done in the comments? I mean, is there a toolbox out there that lends itself to one of these big hefty plastering mixers? Because it is a beast and it's such an awkward shape. How, how do you guys store these things? Because obviously you don't store it in that big cardboard box. Let me know in the comments below what would you have done to try and get this thing organised. And if you want one of these, Evolution hooked us up. They sent us this so we could do this challenge. And they've given us a 5% off code, so you Shadow at the link below. We'll put the link and the details in the description. I am not the right person to review this because I've never used one of these before. Every time I've had to mix up a bit of plaster, I've just used one of those hand mixers that go in a combi drill and that's been absolutely fine. So I can't really give this an honest review. I can say it feels hefty, it feels solid. And when I put the battery in it and give it a run, it did, you know, rotate pretty solidly but here's some footage of someone giving it a proper use sounds absolutely smashing to me nice and quiet won't hurt your ears whatsoever and if you want one check out the link in the description and go and get yourself five percent off and that is the fourth most difficult item let's see the fifth Right, so on to box five. This is a beast and I do recognize the shape of this box. So I've got my suspicions what it is. Let's have a look. Yes, I knew I knew this. I've already opened this box, so I won't open it again on camera. Cut to the footage of me opening it the first time, Matty. Play it. 
now! This is something that's been sent to us and Matt behind the camera knows what it is. And he has said, well, he said a lot of things. <laughs> Matt, Matt's kept this as a surprise from me. I didn't know what this, uh, th this was even here until today. And he's just whipped it out from under his desk. A bit inappropriate. And he had this parcel as well. No. So Matty pulled this out from under his desk. He said someone sent it to us and, you know, he wanted to do this as a surprise unboxing. So this is literally the first I've even laid eyes on this box and I've had two minutes notice and I've looked around and I can't tell anything from the stickers. Literally, I have no idea what this is, but it's a big box and I'll tell you what, hefty is the word. There's a bit of a heft to this box. Let's have a gander. What is in it? Polystyrene, big old chunk of that. <laughs> Well, I know what that is. <laughs> As if. Ah, now, Matt, you cheeky fella, you had me believing this was a toolbox. And actually, this, there is no denying this shape. This is a hangpan. A hangpan. I mentioned this. And I believe this has been sent by Viva. So Viva reached out to us and said, we can send you something for a video. I made a remark that they, it's so random, they sell everything and they have hang drums. Yeah, bloody hell, look at that. I saw a chap playing one of these in York and I was just mesmerized by it. It's absolutely fascinating. It just kind of attracts, it's the engineer in me comes out because basically what this is, it's a piece of steel. A lot of these are handmade. I don't know if this is handmade, but essentially, they kind of like tune the metal and they have these notes. Now I don't think it'll work unless it's sat on your knee because it basically, it has to touch, just touch cloth. <laughs> now there's a phrase. <laughs> Let's see. flipping cool. There's a channel called Hang Massive and we'll link it below the first video I watched. I loved it. So I don't know how the heck we're supposed to put this in foam, but maybe we can. Let's figure it out. So why a hand pan? Well, Viva reached out to us a couple of, well, months back now and they said, is there anything in our catalogue that'd be interesting? And although there was loads of fascinating stuff on there, they have a huge range. They go from all sorts of catering equipment to tools to instruments. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see us review some of the Viva tools and hardware. This colossal beast arrived a couple of months back and I've been able to kind of play around with it. And at the time when I looked into them, these hang drums used to cost a fortune. They're all like hand hammered, hand tuned steel. And I think they were like two, three, four thousand pounds for one. It was like a dream. I think this one came in about 390 pounds, something like that. If you want one of these, by the way, we put a link in the description to the Viva website. And if you save more five, you can get 5% off everything. So that's a little bit of a, uh, a Brucey bonus for everybody watching. So at that price, it's still quite steep for an instrument, but if you're into your instruments and you like crazy sounding instruments, and this thing is pretty wild. I don't know any songs on it, but I'm quite happy to just It. A lot of people play these, so it's incredible what a skilled musician can do with one of these and with enough practice with just, what's this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes and obviously the percussion element, you can do some incredible stuff with it. But I'm a bit confused why you've included it in this challenge, Matty, as the fifth most difficult because I can see why you might think it's difficult, but there's no way I'm cutting this in foam when it comes with this perfectly made Ninja Turtles shell case. I mean, why would you want anything else? It's coming with a backpack made for it. So I can only assume that the fifth thing we need to cut into foam is the stand and the drumsticks because there's nowhere for them to attach to this case. So I've already prepared a Rothenberger row case. This is their smallest size. We have inserts for this one. And the reason why I'm using this is it just stood out. It feels like the perfect size for that. So I'll stick that in there. And I'm guessing that'll be number five done and dusted. Is that right, Matt? No, no, John, no. No. Not quite what you were hoping for, for the fifth most difficult, Matty, or what? <laughs> Thumbs down. Well, that's a stain in there, so let's cut these in. So there we 
we go, that is number five. What a cop out. I think number five was obviously the easiest, but the plasterone mixer really took out of me, as did the flipping spray gun. Both of those are really complicated, awkward shapes that ended up in awkward toolboxes or cases or totes as the uh, plastering mixer did. And even the pipe easy tool and the gimbal that we cut in, they're all quite challenging. And it shows you when it comes to cutting shadow foam, even if it's a really difficult 3D shape, there's still a way to kind of get that done by hand. There was no machines done here. It's all just done with a scalpel, the same knives that come in the basic cutting kit and the pro cutting kit. That's all I've used to do this. So a bit of a bonus on Matty's quest to search out all these items. Lots of companies kindly offer us different tools, different objects, and obviously at Matty arranged five quite good random ones there. Pretty cool assortment. But we had a chair, a big old chair offered to us from Valenciaga. We said yes on the off chance of, you know, what's the worst that could happen. And next thing, this thing turned up, this behemoth of a box weighing over 70 kilos. And I couldn't really believe it, to be honest, when it arrived. I was in shock, but I've not opened it up until this point. Now I know what it looks like, I know what it is. I'm excited to show you, so let's get it opened. So there we have it. This is the Brucey bonus and you're probably as surprised as I am that I'm now sat in this big old chair. It's far better than I expected. When we accepted it, we thought that it would be useful or it would look great in our new studio area, which is where it's probably going to live. Although we've got a couple of other ideas as well. Now it's arrived. I just can't believe how good it is, how many gadgets are on it, how many things it can do and how comfortable it is. Literally I sat in this thing and it's like a flipping cloud and obviously it's got three different modes of adjustment so it's got the normal recline settings so you can kind of lift your legs up and then lie yourself down. But it's also got lumbar support as well and it's got like a, an electronic headrest so it's got full custom comfort settings. It's also got saved settings so you press this I here and it'll set you up in your last saved location so if you sit down and you know exactly how you like your lumbar support and your headrest you press I it'll set you up like that so if you want to leave it looking tidy in the cinema room or the man cave you can press that and it puts it back square again so that's pretty cool it's also got a usb and a usb-c connection on the side right here so that's flipping awesome we've got these two little posts here so you can get a bunch of accessories i had a look on the website and you can get like a tray table and a tablet holder and it kind of just physically clicks into that chrome mount or this one and then you can have your tablet set up it's a really plush material with this like quilted effect it's a really beautiful looking thing and you've got these kind of like little cubbies as well under each arm which are really deep this one here i measured it it's 27 centimeters deep so you can fit a full bottle in there or loads of cans or remotes loads of stuff possibly space for some shadow foam in there i think and it's all hidden way nice and neat and you've got these cup holders as well and it's got this led ring around it and then it's got leds underneath and i think they go to seven different colors so far better than i expected probably too good for our working studio to be honest but it's a hell of a thing and if you want one of these you can head over to the link in the description for they have this chair and loads of others in like twin triple different setups and there you go that is what what a chair i can't believe it I, I literally i'm still sat here in disbelief of how this has been sent to us to review so let's do a roundup on everything it's roundup time so there we have it. That is the five most difficult items to cut in foam. Or was it really? I think we had two really difficult challenging items. The paint sprayer and this plastering mixer thing. These were both really tricky items. I'm not really happy with this. There's got to be a better way to organize these plastering mixers. If you use one of these, does it just get chucked in a bucket or do you have a case for it? Let me know. I read all the comments, so I'd love to hear. And on that note, we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. We've been making videos on YouTube for over seven years and it seems unbelievable to us that we're nearly at 100K. So make sure you subscribe because that means you're part of the journey to 100K. And we are so close close now and also drop a comment because we're going to give one of these items away we love doing giveaways we keep giveaways about as simple as you can get all you've got to do is subscribe like the video and then drop me a comment and then we put all those comments in a tombola we'll pick a name and then we'll send you out one of these five items so all you've got to do is drop me a comment let me know which one of these items you'd like or any comment in general every comment is entered but you must include which one of these items you would like and then we know what to send to you so maybe it's the hand pan <coughs> Maybe it's this gimbal, possibly this paint mixer. Let me know. We'll be doing that draw very soon. We've got a couple of other draws coming up as well. So we've got the multi-tool, which we're going to be drawing out next week. And we've got a Costco Monopoly, which we're drawing next week as well. And then this will probably be the end of January when we draw this one. And hopefully we're nearly at 100K by then. Thanks very much for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos?